to this one's an oldie but a goldie. The Ajahn, doing breath meditation, is it samatha or vipassana? How about body contemplation, samatha or vipassana? Ajahn Chah would not separate with breath meditation, he would not separate samatha and vipassana. He says they are two ends of one stick. So in the act of meditation, you pick up the stick and uh, maybe sometimes it's more towards one end and other times it's more towards another end. So you can observe this, especially on retreat now. You can see uh, sometimes the mind becomes calm when you're meditating on the breath and there's not much investigation but it's pleasant and tranquil. So when it's like that, it's uh, more samatha. But oftentimes, you're trying to be with the breath and you're trying to make the mind calm. And probably for most modern people, it's usually the case that something is hindering, one of the hindrances is hindering that. And so, in the very act of trying to be aware of the breath, you can't help but notice your thoughts your hindrances. And if, because you're trying to meditate, you're sitting in a formal posture and you're trying to meditate, you do have more mindfulness than when you're walking around, probably. And you end up having little insights into the way you think. And you end up, uh, in a way, maturing. You know, it's, it might not be profound insights, but you often just have little insights like, I've thought this same thought a thousand times. Maybe I can stop doing that. And that's an insight, isn't it? That's kind of vipassana. You say, okay, I finally forgive that person because I've had an angry thought about them for a thousand times now. And uh, I'm not going to take this to the grave. So that kind of thing. Similarly, you want to be with your breath, but another person's question, the knee pain there's this knee pain there and you're really trying to be with your breath but the knee pain is impinging more than the breath. And so your intention is breath meditation or it could be back pain or shoulder pain or any kind of pain. And uh, in order to continue meditating you end up having to work with the pain somehow either by contemplating it and trying to separate from it or by counting the breaths and patiently enduring. But the, if you do that, you'll end up having insights into the fact that pain changes, or the fact that sometimes you feel really oppressed by it, but other times, if you go and look at it, then you can separate from it, that kind of thing. So you're trying to do breath meditation, and stuff comes up, the stuff of the mind and the stuff of the body, and you end up having to work with it. And sometimes, you think you're feeling peaceful and you go and sit and you think it's going to be easy to be peaceful and a lot of thinking and sometimes you're really tired and there's a lot of thinking and you think, oh God, I don't want to face my mind and you go and sit and the mind becomes peaceful quite quickly because, you know, it's not self and it's always changing and you can't quite tell which way it's going to go. Every session is a bit different. So, basically, it's, it's both. But you can... You know, you can train with it if you want to develop insight. So that's when you decide to use breath meditation for developing insight. So that might be, rather than just being aware of it and relaxing into the awareness, which is more samatha, allowing the mind to be calm, allowing it formations to be pacified, trying not to think, not following thoughts, using the breath to allow the mind to be as peaceful as possible, and then resting in the awareness what you can do is be really determined to notice the change. So you set that intention, I'm going to do breath meditation, but I'm going to notice the change. I'm going to notice the beginning, the end, the middle, and notice, especially the cessation, end of the in-breath. Then notice the beginning, the middle, the end of the out-breath, and then really notice the end, cessation. So you can do that, and if mindfulness is good, and you need a little bit of samadhi, and you can develop quite deep insight, seeing that an in channel, an in channel, an in channel. So, uh, 
with body contemplation, it really depends how much samadhi there is. So, once again, if it's usually a samatha practice for beginners, because there's not enough samadhi yet to have a really deep insight into the nature of the body, but you'll find contemplating the body, the mind becomes more sober because it's usually obsessed with its kind of fascinations and its preoccupations. It wants it to be beautiful and it craves after other people's bodies as well. And uh, so when you just come and you really think about teeth, blood, that kind of thing, bones, the mind does become a little more calm, a little more sober. So it's in that respect, it's samatha. But as we were reading Ajahn Chah's experience, sorry, Ajahn Anand's experience of his deepening insight to the level of stream entry, it was with body contemplation, so it probably starts as samatha. And as your mindfulness, if your mindfulness is consistent and you develop more samadhi, and if you're really diligent in your investigations, it's definitely vipassana. It can even, well, it does liberate people. So, simple question, a slightly complex answer. The best way to learn about whether some, whether breath meditation is samatha or vipassana is to do it a lot. You know, I like to give that answer because you'll see from your own practice just trying to do breath meditation, sometimes you have insight. And uh, if you do it a lot, you'll find that sometimes you're doing breath meditation, the mind becomes very, very calm. So please do it a lot. <laughs>